We're happy to be joined by Kim Tyler, who is the president and the CEO of Stratabound Minerals. Now, Stratabound has the options rights to the Golden Culvert Project in the Yukon, which sits roughly 20 kilometers northeast of Golden Predators Three Aces, and Aben Resources Justin Gold Projects. It also has a pre- presence in New Brunswick with its McIntyre Brook Project, which is an iron oxide copper gold exploration project. Now, Kim is a mining and exploration professional. He has over 40 years of management and and executive experience in gold, base metals, and industrial minerals with companies including Valet, Rio Tinto, Royal Oak Mines, and Cominco. Since 2007, he has served as president of Canadian Aero Mines, and under his leadership, the company was awarded Developer of the Year in 2008 by Northwestern Ontario Prospectors and Developers Association. He also received a public award of recognition for best business practices by the Grand Chief of the First Nations within Treaty Number 3. Kim has also held operational positions as Manager of Projects Evaluation North America for TSX-listed mid-tier gold producers as well as operation managers for two other TSX listed junior gold development companies. Kim, are you with us? Uh, do you see that you're there? There you uh, are. You see me. Hello. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, can you hear me as well? We can hear you and we can see you. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the Global Mining Symposium. Where are you joining us from today, Kim? Uh, Sudbury, Ontario, my hometown. Fantastic. And my what a town. place. Yeah. The heartbeat of the mining industry in Canada in so many well, the, ways. The nickel capital of, of the world at one time, point, but I guess we're, we're anyway, we're, we're doing what we can here. Still, um, still so important. So now, Kim, are you ready to uh, to give us a bit of a, present, a presentation and let us know what absolutely. Stratabound is up to? Absolutely. I just wanted to say off the bat, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm really chuffed and pleased to be following Mr. Mark Bristow. Uh, that was uh, an interesting, a very excellent talk. And I have to say for a man with as much as his plate, he still has his passion for what he does and be, um, beyond mining, it, it's social responsibility is excellent. So he's given the view uh, of the very, very top of the food chain in our industry. And I will be giving you a talk from the next to the bottom of the industry, from the very junior section. But we have aspirations, uh, as you'll know, I've talked about it many times to, uh, to we see out there the opportunity to build the next Bull Corp, the next Newmont, the next Barrack. And we worked for companies in the past that have actually came close to that. So, so without any further ado, I'll jump into my presentation and, and pick that off right now. Excellent. Thank you, Kim. We look forward to it. That should be all, all good there. I can see it. Yeah, it's just loading now, Kim. It should just yep. take a second. Hmm. I get it to go full screen, but it's slow. There we go. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so uh, don't see it here yet, though, Kim. Just one second. It's still saying it started to share screen. If you can, can you just go back to the start share um, start share screen button and just ensure you clicked on your presentation that you'd like to share, and then click the share button. Yep, it says there you are. There we go. Okay, we got it now. Perfect. It's just slow. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe the internet could be faster in Sudbury. I don't know. Maybe it's faster. <laughs> it's <laughs> the planet. But anyway. Uh, so the, a bit of the information you brought out there is kind of the issue that Stratabound has. We've actually transitioned. A major event happened in, in the last month that is we're working hard to get the story out. And, and clearly a lot of the information you put out there this morning is kind of old um, uh, uh, for the fact that uh, we've just uh, made an acquisition. We acquired uh, California Gold and picked up the Fremont Gold Project in California. And the big story for us is we're we're, uh, the title line here is a big mouthful, but new acquisition, which is the Fremont property of near-term gold production and growth potential providing significant re-rate opportunity. And this is big news for us. We've moved, we've moved in, in, in a very, almost in a flash from being uh, working on uh, exploration projects and, and developing them, bringing them forward, and, and actually moving towards a production scenario we see in California. And we'll, we'll get through that discussion as we go through. We are seeing our gold and culvert project. That was, that was our uh, flagship operation. And still, as far as expiration goes in the Yukon, we're very excited about that one. Uh, but we'll be talking about talking about uh, uh, the Fremont shortly. Forward-looking statements, of course. So, uh, quick comment for investors, and I spent a long time calling this down because I could talk for hours, and I had to bring it down quickly here. But why, key points here: Why invest in Stratabond Minerals Corp? It's been around since 1986. I jumped into the company in 2017. It's relatively new, uh, old is new again. 
But in October 2021, we've acquired over a million ounces of current and historic resources. And I'll get into that discussion because I will add them up for this discussion at a uh, enterprise value of $9 and $26 an ounce. Uh, it was, a, it was a, some debt uh, involved in it and, and uh, debt included in the, uh, uh, the um, enterprise value plus that it was a one-to-one -one share exchange. Right now, uh, we've just launched into it and, and there's a reason here, but we're extremely undervalued. Every junior will say that, but we're really undervalued. We're at the bottom of the about 20 uh, peer companies we're in. We're 76% below the average. The markets have not recognized this major transformation yet. Uh, just started kicking off the marketing, putting a lot of investment into it in the last few days and getting the story out. We'll continue to do so. We believe we could be in a small scale production scenario. Now, it is a large project. It's 20 million tons, but we, it's our strategy is a bit different. We'll talk a bit more as we go forward, but we, could start, we want to start small, uh, micro mining, small scale uh, operation, heat bleach which is safely done in California already. Equinox is doing it down there already and that we can bring that forward and build out to a larger open pit and underground operation. It's in safe North American jurisdictions. That's where we work, California, USA, and Canada and significant uh, production growth opportunities with excellent exploration upside on our advanced as well as our early stage projects. We have a track record of quality results and I'll talk about what we've done since the last four years. We have an experienced, motivated management and board and, we're, and we have been executing on our strategy. Where are our operations? Uh, the new ones are Fremont in California. That's our flagship operation now. Uh, Whittle Open Pit and one forty three one on resource in, in October. We just uh, brought up the resource, uh, uh, did an updated resource estimate, 526,000 ounces in the indicated and 452,000 in the inferred. The Dingman is also one. We haven't looked as closely at that one as really the, the peach we're looking after is the Fremont, but the Dingman is another one. It's in South, Southern Ontario. And I'm a, I've been aware of it for years. It's very low grade and it was the resource estimate is historic. Uh, we we're going to get that updated. I was just talking to our consultants yesterday and we're going to work on getting that updated in the next coming months. Uh, small, um, small, grade, low grade and, and they've done at $1,200 an ounce in 2010. And we're going to get that updated. We have legacy projects in Bathurst, New Brunswick. That's the company I had when I joined the board. I'm going to tell you that when I joined uh, Stratabound in 2017, it was a shell at a half a million dollars in debt. It had this property and not much else going for it. And I was, I'd been working as a, uh, you heard my background, but mainly mining operations. And as a chief mine geologist, a mine, mine manager in my background, it, and it was time in my latter years, I, I saw this property in, in the Yukon, uh, which is Golden Culvert, we'll talk about. I really liked it a lot, thought it was perfect for Shell. And I was asked to come aboard and we brought that in, raised a million dollars and worked on that. So we'll be talking about that. I call that mid-stage because we've got some drilling done on it. It's actually no longer Golden Predator, but Seabridge Gold, a billion dollar market cap company, bought it about a year ago from Golden Predator and they're out there working on it the last couple of years. So the, the Golden Predator has moved on. But that's what's exciting about that one is that and why I looked at it in the first place, because the three aces is a 5,401 gram per ton gold discovery uh, in, in 2003. The Eastern Yukon is not well explored and still a new area to look at. The Western Yukon, you're hearing all about with white gold, but we're in the Eastern Yukon, a place that really isn't, uh, hasn't caught fire yet, but there's lots of gold and, and uh, opportunities out there. And finally, McIntyre Brook, I can say the same thing. Uh, the McIntyre Brook property is something we looked at where the gold is not supposed to be. And I, I love that when people tell me that you shouldn't go look here. Uh, there's don't go look in there, there's no gold, but prospectors are finding it. And we'll Puma expiration is right beside us having terrific uh, uh, success there, and we're right on, right on strike with them. So building a new North American uh, gold explorer, that's what we plan to do. We're moving from exploration. We want to get into operations. We're operators, and that's the funny thing that makes us set up, sets us apart a bit, is that uh, in the latter part of some of our career, we've looked back and said, let's go do, let's uh, join a company, let's up to big companies, and, and we see opportunities all around that are left behind, uh, hidden opportunities, distressed assets for one reason or another, really have nothing to do with the quality of the the project, it's got to do with maybe the gold price failed or they got into debt or the company managed it poorly, whatever. We see these opportunities and California has been something we've been looking at for about five years and finally came, came across something in the last year. So how are we going to uh, get this to production and how are we going to do this? We're going to do something a bit different. I talk about this a lot, staged mine development, small to large. I often say in my talks, uh, the big, go big or go home thing is, is, is for losers. We have too many too many big projects that were taken off and go big right away and you get billion dollar pre-production capital. What we've been searching for for the longest time and we've done it in small scale for bigger operations before, look for a project that has the optionality to start off low, uh, low risk, micro risk in fact, low capital, small scale, like a 50, 100,000 ton start operation. Fremont offers that opportunity with heat bleach. There's also sulfide related ore at depth and it historically mined underground 
the 3 million narrow vein gold. So leverage that starter operation, get the free cash flow going. Anybody knows a cash flow model, you want to immediately start generating key free cash flow as fast as possible and not rely on debt and, and, the, and the cost of money over the, over the long term. You want to get in going right away. And then the other reason for doing it is you're starting off small, you're learning about it. It's a proof of concept. You, you mark, uh, iron out all the bugs in the beginning, and then you're ready to expand, bring people on. Uh, you start off a small group to be able to expand it out into a full production potential within four years, as we find out Fremont. And meanwhile, advancing the pipeline of early stage assets that we already have uh, and, and, acquire, and, and then at the same time, which we can talk more about, there are a lot more of these opportunities we've been seeing in the last while. Things like the barracks and the new months and so on will not look at because they're not a million ounces. They might be at a quarter of a million ounces. We see opportunities. You don't have to have an elephant to survive after, forever. You can have a, a, a coop full of chickens. You can have a herd of antelope. You can live off these things for a long time. We see these opportunities, smaller projects and central milling facilities, this type of way to look. So we're going to look at the niche that nobody else is looking at. So Stratavan has the assets. We've got the experienced, motivated team and the proven access to capital. We've been able to finance through a very rough time. This slide here is probably the one I would talk about the most, the re-rating potential. Uh, Stratabound tra trades at an enterprise value for resource ounce multiple of only $9 an ounce. That's even less than what we, uh, we paid for the project which is 76% below the average comparable, comparable gold explorers in our, in our, in our peer group and, and with operations and assets in the US, which the average right now is we just looked, updated this is a $37 uh, equivalent uh, valuation per, per ounce uh, gold equivalent average. So this would imply a market capital is, and this is stuff that the analysts are gonna do and I'm doing it anyway, because uh, we've had analysts actually look at this but, and provide us with this information, but. We should be at a market cap of 86 million and actually we're sitting at 17 million. We just announced this, the uh, sudden new transition and acquisition of ounces has not yet recognized in the capital markets. And it's my job to get the story out there. In fact, when we, we uh, published these press releases, no uh, media outlet even picked it up. We didn't see it in the junior mining network. We didn't see it in the Northern Miner. We saw it, we didn't see it anywhere. And it was just, it was a soft time in the market. It just didn't get picked up. So it will, because we're gonna keep working at it. A uh, little note here, and here's, here's the uh, comparable companies we're in, and the bar here at uh, $37 an ounce, where we sit at nine, right at the very bottom. Uh, the interesting thing is we did this in May in a previous, uh, previous version of this, and in May, uh, the, the average was $53 an ounce. It's dropped 30% in seven months. Gold is at eight, 1874 back then. Gold is on the rise, and it's only dropped half a percent. We're at 1864 today. So it's funny to note here that that a small drop in whether it's related or not, it's an interesting uh, factoid that half a percent drop in the, in the gold price, it, does that really equate to a 30% variation in, in the uh, uh, valuations of these companies? Is the reverse also true? Anyway, if we're, we're sitting at 17 million now, uh, enterprise value, and if we get to where even the median of this 37, we should be uh, 86 million. It should, should be a five times uh, multiple, but this is the market's job uh, to 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 level this out. That's what the market should be doing. If it does its job, that's where we should be. It's my job to get out there to make sure people understand, and it's our job to prove we can do it. And that's our next steps is to say what are we going to do. This slide has got a lot of information. I couldn't stop putting it on here, but this is uh, our milestones going back three years to early 2018. I joined in 20, 2017, 2018. We acquired the Golden Clover project, start working on it, and our first drilling had two and a half grams per ton over 33 meters, including. Uh, 60 grams over a meter and, and, the, and our stock rose a bit at that time. And this is a brand new area, it had never been drilled before. That's uh, the first drill program, the first five holes we got excellent results on. So uh, we carry along through time and here I'm seeing, we're seeing gold for, for at, at this point in time in about April, 2019 of about $20 an ounce. We didn't put out a lot of news. Uh, we, we started our expiration program, gold is rising. And then we published the, in the next year, our 2019 program, we published uh, values of 3.3 uh, grams per ton uh, over, um, over nine meters, including 19 and a half over, over one and a half meters. Now these are, these are average, you know, these are what we're looking at at our strat, at our golden culvert is a narrow vein, a high grade surrounded by low grade. So the opportunity for open pit, or we're looking at both scenarios as you go deeper, you might go underground. We make the Nat McIntyre Brook acquisition. Our share price bumps up a little bit. These green values are where we've done our financings all along. Most recently we produced 2 million. Well, we raised uh, $200,000 in, in, in late 2019. Carry on, here's our work. Not much going on. What's happening here? No news going out. And suddenly we're taking off. Here's our share price hitting around 38 cents. I even thought that was uh, odd. I was out in the field at the time. Uh, we had bad communications. My wife called me and said, the share price is moving up and gold's at $1,900 an ounce. And I didn't believe her, but I got out of the field and I found out she's right. And at this point in time, we're seeing $2,000 an ounce. 
I can only attribute this because we were putting news out our, our, our increase in value to do with the, perhaps the gold price, but you see it starting to drop off. And even then our price kicks off in lag. And maybe this is a fact of, of other, of other juniors as well, that they're seeing that there's a lag between gold price and what the, what the uh, actual companies, the producers and the explorers are finding. But this is where we sat. And I've had, I've had some flack and I'm a shareholder. I own over, over one and a half million shares. And I'm, I'm not happy how the share price has dropped off. I'm even putting out a lot of news and perhaps Tongue in cheek, maybe we shouldn't be putting out any news and our share price would go to 50 bucks. Uh, kind of silly, but it seems that's the market and that's what we're fighting. However, we're seeing the uh, gold price moving off in the future and whatever it does, it does. Uh, th that's for people wiser and smarter and the analysts that, that whatever they think. And I think you're never intended to predict perfectly what's going to happen. But this is a watershed moment for here, right? Just in October, October uh, when we published the 43.1, the new 43.1 resource ounces, they're current. They're in our, on our books now. We had zero ounces prior to that. Now we got 53, uh, half a million of the indicated and nearly that as much in the inferred 43.1. Plus you've got historic results on, on a separate deposit. This is just Fremont that we're gonna be putting in. So we're, this should be a bump, but we're gonna see. Uh, we, we just raised $2 million. We raised that, uh, that money at a premium at 12 cents our, while our stock was trading at nine. So, and, and insiders picked up on that. So we're putting our money where our mouth is, our own, our own people, that includes me. Uh, we're in for the long term. We're here to see this work, and we've got skin in the game, definitely. So uh, quickly, pro forma, uh, this is where Stratabound sits now, 155 million shares. Long-term private holders hold about 37%. Management holds 5%. I hold about a percent myself. Total management holders, 42%. Market cap, 14.7 million. We discussed that. Cash and equivalent, 5 million, so on. Whoops, jumped too fast. Uh, one of the things I'm going to point out right away, you'll see, you'll see this coming up in our next financial statements that are coming out. You don't get an asset like Fremont and, and Dingman without some pain. And we picked up some uh, long-term debt and some uh, accounts payable. And we were aware of that and we're prepared to handle that. We can service the debt in the long term. And we just raised $2 million, So we got about $7 million uh, collected right now, plus warrants coming due fairly soon. Uh, so we should be, we see us being able to have a, a, a runway getting out there into 2022 and into 2023, hopefully not having to raise too much money, if at all. But in that time, we hope to be, if we do raise money, it's at a better share price than we're sitting at now. Uh, let's talk about Fremont. Why is California such a prized jurisdiction? Why are we so interested? We've been looking at this for over five years. You'll hear this from others in California. There's not many people in there. Equinox is down there right now operating their two operations. He, he, he uh, Kim, yeah. Kim, we are we are past time. We have a bunch of executives waiting. Can you maybe just wrap this up in the next two minutes? We're at about 15 sure. minutes right now. I, sure. I guess uh, I can just say uh, this would be it because this is the slide I'd probably jump to. But uh, California hasn't been uh, really open to mining since 1944, since the Second World War. These mines shut down at $35 an ounce and they're mining high grade, high grade narrow vein. Today, you can get in uh, with, uh, with more technology, much more efficiently mining and so on. And, 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 and I, I like the permitting jurisdiction down in California. So it, it's, it's very reasonable, but you're dealing with the county, so it's, it's focused. So I guess in the end, we're not stopping here. We see other low hanging fruit. We have plans to build the company. We have plans to move forward, become an operating company and, and build beyond. So uh, I would like to say that I do say it is that we're looking at at the barracks of the world as and the equinoxes as leading. And that's where we want to follow and build a mining company above and beyond just exploration and, and publishing drill results. It, it's more than that. It's about we're in here for the mining. That's what we're all about. It's about mining and building mines. Excellent, Kim. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry not to jump in there. There, I understand there's a lot here to unpack. And those are some great slides and a very thorough presentation. I think that uh I think you make a very compelling case there that a revaluation is coming your way and uh, you guys are making a lot of traction here quickly. We certainly love stories about the next round of developers and your experience at some of the large producing companies shows that uh, you're in a good position to do this. So we, uh, we look forward to watching this going forward and uh, we'll be sure that our reporters at the Northern Miner track it, <laughs> track it going forward, Kim. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate that. Any help we can get, the eyes on the story. That's my job, and I'm 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 doing the best I can to get it out there and, and uh, pounding it. But it's it's a great it's a fun story. We're having fun. I guess that's the point. We like really like what we do. We're motivated because we this is fun now for us to do. Yeah. Kim, just very quickly before you go, because there is you know the there is sometimes investors saying, oh California. Now I know and you know that and you pointed to it. There's the counties yeah. and there is parts of California where you can absolutely get things done. But can you can you address that if, for any investors Absolutely. out there that don't think that you can't 
develop a mine in California? Absolutely. My learning my learning lesson was working for uh, Titan Mining in, in at the Balmat Mine for as a consultant, and I was surprised to find, it, and that's the same as where we're finding California. Those people, that those communities were were like Timmins. They're, they're mining communities. Their uncles and aunts and worked in those mines forever. And that's what these a little town like uh, it's a small community of Mariposa, and it relies mainly on tourism. So there's the economic benefit they've got. But when you with my colleagues are down there, we've got three consultants from California, a geologist and a permitter, particularly. He's the top permitter in California. He permits uh, chemical plants on the salt flats outside of San Francisco. But they'll tell you these communities, and that's the fun part. You're dealing, it's like going to Timmins and getting a permit through the Timmins uh, City Council. You're not going to uh, the, the government of Ontario, which is preoccupied in Toronto doing whatever it does. You're actually dealing with people who've got stake in the game. And it's not so much that they have, uh, they're going to short, the, 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 the regulations are as stringent as they are anywhere on the planet. It's just that they're focused on, on attending to you. And there's lots of distraction in, in, in the provinces in, in, in Canada uh, trying to get things done. And then it impacts, you know, there's all kinds of uh, conflicting purposes going on. Whereas in this case, you're, you're dealing with the locals. And, 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 that, and that, so the permitting side to me is a surprise, but that's the states. That's just different than our country. It is more pleasant to work down there in that regard. Excellent. Thank you for that clarification. All right, Kim, we'll watch with great interest. Thank you so much for joining us at the Global Mining Symposium. We wish you great success in 2022. Thank you very much. Take care and look forward to the rest of the talks. Cheers. Thank you, Kim. Bye-bye.